my story unfolded in my mature years. I had spent my entire life working as a truck driver. I never allowed myself to spend money unnecessarily. At some point, I accumulated a large sum of money that allowed me to leave my job and enjoy life. I bid farewell to my work and sold the truck that had faithfully served me. My old bones carried the burden of many years of truck driving, but even at 64, I felt alive, especially when I found myself in Thailand. I had wanted to visit this amazing country for a long time. My wife, with whom I had spent my entire life, refused to go, citing the need to help our children look after the grandchildren. At that moment, I thought my life was already written, that all the interesting pages had been turned, but then something unexpected happened. Leaving my old wife at home, I embarked on a journey in search of something new, something that would awaken in me a sense of vitality that I had begun to lose. In a massage parlor, I met her, Lynn, a young woman radiating freshness and energy, only 23 years old. Her smile made my heart beat faster, and her voice sounded like a song sung by nature itself. Our romance was fast and passionate, like a fire igniting in the dead of night. She opened up a new world of emotions for me, filling my heart with love and passion. Lynn confessed her feelings to me, and I decided to bring her with me to the United States. A new life began with the divorce from my old wife, a process that was not without pain but was a necessary step towards my new happiness. I felt alive again when Lynn and I exchanged vows of love at the altar. Over time, our happy life became clouded by material needs. First, I bought a house, then came a new car, followed by expensive clothes and luxurious entertainment. Lynn was young and active. I wanted to make this beautiful girl's life without clouds. Unfortunately, my savings began to thin out, slipping away like sand between my fingers. I understood that the money would soon run out, but even that couldn't dim my joy at having Lynn by my side. She was my light in the darkness, and I was willing to do anything to keep that light in my life. So, I returned to work as a truck driver to provide for both of us, embarking on long journeys and leaving her in our small home awaiting my return. But no journey could compare to the feeling of coming back to her after a long separation. Days on the road blurred together, each turn, each gas station reminding me of how far I was from Lynn. We exchanged messages and calls from time to time, but it was only a weak comfort against the distance. Every evening, when I finished my route and parked the truck, I would close my eyes and imagine that Lynn was by my side again. Her warmth, her scent, her smile, all of it felt so far away from me. Sometimes, I cursed my decision to return to work, but then I remembered that it was necessary for our future. We dreamed of a bigger house, of a family, of children. I knew that could only happen with my efforts on the road. But with each new day on the road, my body and soul grew more weary. Even the most beautiful landscapes outside my window couldn't replace the companionship of Lynn. I began to wonder if it was all worth the sacrifice. But every time I saw her face on the screen of my phone or heard her voice on the other end of the line, all doubts vanished. The love we shared was my anchor, my guide in this ocean of separation. I kept moving forward overcoming miles and time, knowing that eventually I would return to her. Our love was a lighthouse, guiding me through the dark waters of separation towards a new life that we dreamed of creating together. After another week of absence, when I returned home, I sensed something strange in Lynn's gaze. Her eyes no longer sparkled as they used to, and her smile seemed somewhat artificial to me. At first, I thought it was just fatigue, but with each passing day, this feeling only grew stronger. My psychologist, who had given brilliant advice in the past, suggested diversifying our relationship. 
He believed that a romantic gesture could bring freshness into our lives. I decided to surprise Lynn to reignite the spark in our relationship that seemed to be fading away. So, that evening, I returned home without warning. A huge bouquet of roses and a reserved table at a restaurant were my way of telling her how much I loved her. I approached the door and knocked. In my hand, I held the bouquet of roses, which I extended forward. I wanted the first thing Lynn would see when she opened the door to be the bouquet. After a minute, the door opened. To my surprise, it wasn't Lynn. For a moment, I thought I had the wrong address. The burly, muscular guy who opened the door, seeing the bouquet, said, Old man, calm down. Looks like you've had too much Viagra. His words stunned me. I timidly said, I'm Lynn's husband. The guy chuckled and replied, but not tonight. The real blow came when Lynn appeared and simply remained silent. The guy snatched the bouquet from me and threw it back in my direction. He closed the door with the words, get out of here, don't interfere. At that moment, I felt like my life was crumbling beneath me and all I could do was leave that place, seeking refuge from the bitter truth in my truck. That night, spent in the cramped cabin of the truck, was filled with sleepless hours. Questions swirled in my head, for which I couldn't find answers. Who was that guy? Why did Lynn disown me? In the morning, I resolved to gather all my strength and figure out what was happening. While the world outside was just waking up, I was already on my way to our home. Every step was difficult, but I was determined to confront this situation. As I approached our home, I noticed that something had changed. There was tension in the air, like clouds before a storm. I knocked on the door, my heart pounding so hard that I could hear its beats. When Lynn opened the door, she looked scared and embarrassed, as if she had hidden something important. I immediately felt that something had changed between us, something I couldn't understand. Lynn, what's going on? My voice sounded like a whisper, breaking the silence. Who was that guy? Why did you stay silent? Her gaze slid past me, and I saw a strange shade of fear in her eyes. We need to talk, she finally said, as if emerging from confusion. And so began a long and difficult conversation that shattered all my notions about our life together. But even in that moment, I knew that both of us needed to go through this to find a path to our future. Lynn explained that it had been difficult for her without me. Once, during a thunderstorm with lightning flashing, she got scared while alone at home. She couldn't find peace, and she began to have a panic attack. So Lynn had no choice but to ask for help from her fitness trainer who lived two blocks away from us. John came to her aid in just an hour. He misunderstood Lynn's request and soon put her to bed. She said it happened only three times and she wouldn't call John anymore. She loves only me. I found the strength within myself to understand and forgive her as my negligence played a part in this. We decided together that I wouldn't be away for more than three days from now on. The storm subsided, and our life returned to its usual course. I am happy again.